Praise the Lord, dear children of God. Today is another day that the Lord is giving us a message, a message of sorrows. It's a lot of mourning and weeping in the whole world because of the many souls who are dying. We have many souls that are not given an opportunity to come and live in this world. And these are the many people, many babies that are killed in their mother's womb. We remember from the scriptures, the first book or during the creation, um, the, first, our first, the first children of our first parent, uh, Abel and Cain, when Jesus asked Cain, why is your brother? And Cain said, am I my brother's keeper? This is the question that especially uh, the Catholic Conference of Bishops, wherever they are, God is asking you, what is happening with these, all these children that are being killed in their mother's womb? What are you doing to protect this? Many would say that we organize March for Life uh, rallies. We go to March in DC and other places in the world. But is that really uh, significant compared to the to the millions of uh, babies that are killed through abortion? Recently, we just uh, had the two uh, incidences where uh, people were marching in Washington D.C., and it was so so surprising that uh, even in the news we never heard anything about people coming together to protect the lives of the babies in their in their mother's home all we had was the conflict between the young uh, the young kids and the uh, elderly native american that's the news we were hearing and uh, we you wonder what was that all about the match for life and very shortly a few days later we had the, we had all the news from uh, New York uh, that went all over the world that they have uh, accepted and they have regularized abortion and later we had responses from different people the bishops from New York uh, came together and wrote a note to say that they do not support and they are against that ruling and they continued to promise their uh, the, the, the bishops con uh, continue to promise their pledge to help those young people those people who have uh, who have uh, are pregnant and they want to keep their kids their babies but now the question is is this just a matter of uh, words they can write they can call, the bishops can come together and say we pledge and we renew our pledge to support the women who are pregnant but let us look to the reality where are these bishops when these especially uh, women from a poor background those who are on the streets the the, the the homeless people the prostitutes when they get pregnant and in case they need any a, a, any word any ear to listen to them why is the church the churches are always closed and so the best places they would get help are those clinics and so that's why uh, it is very very hypocritical to hear any conference of bishop uh, coming up with the uh, with conferences and giving uh, notes and, uh, like that they want to support they are against abortion, but they are not really helping anyone because uh, for those who are for abortion, it's not that they, they don't value life. It's not that they, 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 they understand what a woman really goes through. And that's why even in the Congress, we see they bring uh, doctors to explain how these abortions take place. So those who the rich and the, those who are enlightened, they know they know really 
uh, the repercussions of abortion. But when uh, they put a law that they have accepted uh, that they have legalized abortion is because they want to prevent the population, especially of these uh, very, very uh, low people, uh, people who cannot be able to take care of themselves, people who are bringing kids who are seen to be a liability to the state, uh, to, this, uh, to the place. So it's all, it's all about uh, economy. It's about uh, the people who are really taking this agenda about abortion. They have the economy at the back of their mind. But when they charge because they value life, they, they, we know that life is sacred, is given by God. And it's not just a matter of sitting together in a room and saying, uh, we should go. We should uh, defend defend uh, those people, uh, women who are pregnant. It's, that's not just enough. We need to do more. Uh, especially, uh, I remember when I was in uh, Illinois, um, many churches during Sunday they would put uh, the, as an intention during their prayers of the faithful. I think it was the fourth. Uh, prayer of the faithful that uh, we are praying let us pray for the closure of the abortion clinics uh, in this city in Madison City or in whichever city and it was just like a like like a habit uh, you could see something written they write down the prayers and uh, for me I believe that's not a sincere prayer God wants to see not just a prayer that is written on the paper, but a, since a prayers that are coming from the heart. And people who mean it, they don't just pray, they pray and they also go and conscientize these uh, women, these girls who are in great uh, problem. They, they, some are homeless, some even do not have jobs, some are even uh, doing uh, prostitution. So they don't have the shepherds to listen to them. They don't have people to go to, uh, to, 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 to for counseling. All the, the, the only places they find themselves that is very readily available just by uh, uh, getting in, uh, getting there, uh, there are those abortion clinics, and there they get people who are ready to listen to them. And the only advice they are given, don't worry, we can take care of uh, the baby that is in your stomach. But when maybe a, a, a girl uh, is pregnant and want to uh, seek counsel from the church, it becomes a very, very uh, hectic process. First of all, they find the, the churches are closed uh, and they, they are not, the offices you have to book for appointments. Yet in the abortion clinics, they don't need to book appointments. So those are the challenges. And that's what God is really challenging uh, the shepherds and all the people in the church that we have contributed to the legalization of the abortion uh, that are taking place. Millions and millions of babies are being killed in their mother's womb. And uh, as, we are, as I've said, those who are really campaigning for abortion, they uh, have they have their own agenda about the economy, about regulating uh, poverty in their area, about uh, not uh, not wanting to bring uh, kids that seems to be liability to them. So it is a high time that the conferences of bishops uh, come together and they not just uh, support those matches where we see even people, young, uh, uh, young people in schools who have nothing to do with abortion, just going on the streets and marching. And yet, we don't have a uh, place. We don't bring those uh, women who are prone to abortion. Who, who, those women who ha have not uh, have no good uh, life. They have no place. Look at those clips of the March for Life. And you see the kind of people who go marching. They are well-up people, people from very, very uh, rich families. And we, we don't really see a whole picture of the, the, the nation, and especially 
the people, the victims of abortion. So uh, as God uh, reminded us through uh, prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 49, that uh, a mother can never forget his, her child. And so, uh, and if in case he forget, she forgets her child, God will never forget his own. So I have confidence that for us, anyone that belongs to God, God will never forget you. God never forget even those babies that are in their, in their mothers, those who are being killed. God is with them and he is hearing their cry. And that's why he is sending his prophets to bring this mess, such message that the church should wake up and support support those people, those women who are pregnant to so that they are able to get somebody to listen to them and they are able to give birth and, so, and, and raise their kids to fulfill their dreams in life. So uh, this message is for all uh, people, uh, especially those who are fighting uh, for life, uh, the campaign for life, that they may know it's not just a matter of going on the streets, it's not just a matter of saying we are praying for against abortion or in the churches. There is more than that. And so we, when we do this, we are really going to uh, hear and to heed the call of God to be, uh, to support life and to know the dignity of life. Thank you very much and God bless you and let us all go to our, uh, uh, go upon our knees to ask for forgiveness for the many lives that have been lost. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of life, those of us who are alive, who got an opportunity to be born. And we ask for forgiveness for the many children, many babies who have been killed in their mother's womb because of the negligences of many, many people, especially those you have given uh, the role to be shepherds. We ask for forgiveness, dear Lord, and we pray that you may pre protect and prevent any further killing that is happening in the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.